In this section, I am going to show you how to find potential for a conservative vector field. So, consider the following vector field F arrow at the point xy, xy having the components 2 plus y and 3 plus x. We see that these two expressions are defined for all real x and y, so the domain of definition is the entire plane R2. We also see that these functions are polynomials, so this function is of class C infinity R2. Because it is continuous and has continuous derivatives of any order. And now if we denote the first component at 1, and if we denote the second component at 2, we want to test whether the partial derivative of f1 with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of f2 with respect to x. The first component, when differentiated with respect to y, gives 1, and the second component, f2, when differentiated with respect to x, gives 1. And you see, they are equal for all x, real x, for all real x and y, which is an open, simply connected set, so that the potential exists. And now how to find potential. By potential, we mean a function u such that its gradient is equal to the vector field f. That means the partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to f1, and partial derivative of u with respect to y is equal to f2. And we will see two possible approaches. And one of them has about even two possible variations of this computation. So first we can look at this as a system of two partial differential equations for the unknown function u of x and y. So considering the first equation, we can integrate and we can find that u is integral of f1 dx in this case, f1 is 2 plus y dx, which is 2 plus y times x plus a constant. A constant in the sense that it does not depend on x, but it may depend on y. Let's call this constant phi of y. It's a constant in the sense that it doesn't depend on x, but it may depend on y. So, not the real constant. And how to find this constant function, non-constant function, phi and y? Well, we can use the second equation. The partial derivative with respect to y should be equal to f2. So, if we take this and differentiate with respect to y, we have 2x gives 0, xy differentiated with respect to y is x plus. And phi is a function of one variable, so we can denote the derivative with prime. And this should be equal to f2, and f2 is 3 plus x. We subtract x and we have that f prime y is equal to 3. And when we integrate, we have f as a function of y is integral 3 dy, which is 3y plus c. And now c is a real constant. Not depending on x, not depending on y. Well, and when we have phi, we can put it here and we have the potential q as a function of x and y is, let me expand that multiplication, 2x plus xy plus phi, which is 3y plus c. So this is the result. We can easily check this by substituting u into these two equations and comparing what is on the left and what is on the right. 
So let's try to check. So on the left of the first equation, we have u dx, which is 2 plus y plus 0. And on the right, we have f1, which is 2 plus y. Yes, it agrees. And on the left of the second equation, we have u dy, and when we differentiate our result with respect to y, we have 0 plus x plus 3 plus 0. And on the right of the second equation, we have f2, which is 3 plus x. Yes, the same. So this is indeed the potential. It is given up to an additive constant. And from this condition alone, the constant cannot be found, cannot be determined. To have the value for the some numerical value for the additive constant C, we need some more conditions, some more information. And this extra information can be specified by giving the potential value at one point. Say if we want potential at the point 0, 0 be equals to 7, for example, then substituting 0 for x, 0 for y, evaluating this expression, we have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus c is 7. <coughs> and then when we have the numerical value for the integration constant c, we can write that the potential satisfying this condition is equal to 2x plus xy plus 3y plus c, which is now 7. So that was the first way how to find the potential corresponding to a conservative vector field f arrow. The second way is we can use integral, line integral. And we start at some convenient point, which is often origin, if possible. And then we go to some general point with coordinate, let's denote it x tilde, y tilde. Because we will need x and y for the points on the way. And now the potential in this general point x tilde y tilde minus potential at the chosen point, say 0, 0, can be found as a line integral over the curve C of the given vector field. And as we know that the vector field is conservative, it has potential, then it is the integral is path independent. So we can choose any path we like. For someone, perhaps a convenient, a convenient choice might be to show this connection between these two points. It is possible, but in many cases, other path is more useful. In particular, path consisting of segments parallel to coordinate axis is often more convenient to compute, to use. So let's try this curve C1 and then this curve C2. We want the uh, parametric equations. C1 can be parameterized by x is t, y is 0, and t runs from 0 to x tilde. And the second part, C2, can be parameterized with x is x tilde, the constant final value of x, and y 
grows from zero to y turned on. And then the potential at the point x tilde y tilde is equal to the value of the potential at the origin plus the line integral. Integrating along C1, we write the limits. T goes from 0 to x tilde. F1 is equal to 2 plus y, but y is 0. dx, which is dt, plus the line integral along the curve C2, and then t goes from 0 to y tilde. F2. Well, yeah, if you ask, why didn't we write F2 dy? Because dy is 0. And here we don't have to write f1 dx because dx is 0. So we write only f2 dy. f2 is 3 plus x, but x is equal to x tilde, dy, which is dt. So we have u at 0, 0 plus 2 times x tilde plus 3 plus x tilde is a constant times y tilde. And at this point we can remove the tildes and we can write that u and xy is equal to u and 0, 0 plus 2x plus 3y plus xy. <coughs> if we compare with the result using the previous approach, we have exactly the same form of the potential 2x plus xy or 3y plus some constant. Yeah, going back to the first approach, we started with the first equation and then we use the second one. Alternatively, we can start with the second equation to write u is integral of f2 dy, which will be 3 plus x dy, which is 3 plus x times y plus some constant in the sense constant not depending on y but which may depend on x. Let's call it psi of x. And then we would find psi using the first condition, the first, first equation when we differentiate this with respect to x. The computation is very similar to the previous one. So this is how to find the potential, and this, both of these methods work even for a three-dimensional case.